Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Bricks brought to you by Sporting News and Kick It Forward, a very special Kick It Forward crossover here. We haven't spoken to the guys in a while. So before we get to a very big interview with Jonah Bolden, former NBA player and now Sydney King, who's had a very interesting basketball journey, uh, we will catch up with the guys. Uh, Harry's on the line. He's got COVID back from Niseko. How are you going? Mm, boys. Oh. I took the words right out of my mouth, Harry. Which, <laughs> which the Japanese will understand is just when you thought the silly season was over. <laughs> oh, he's good. <laughs> How did you take, How didn't did miss you take a beat. That one? Uh, no, no, no. I picked up a bit of a uh, bit of a n- l- native tongue when I was over in Japan for a couple of weeks, boys. The land of ramen powder and nine um, percent strong zeros. Well, I'm actually headed there on Sunday, but we are going to the Australian Open this week. Uh, but we have some basketball to discuss as well. But before we get to that, Georgia, how are you going? You're obviously in studio. It's been a while. Yeah, good, good. Uh, good to get... Well, I've, I've never stopped grinding. Uh, I don't I don't have silly season. I just work all the way through. I just... Um, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I'm, I'm in here all the time. You've definitely maintained the same level of work ethic that we expect, so I really appreciate <laughs> that. Um, thanks so much, guys. Uh, yeah, George and I were in Sydney. We are actually with the Sydney Kings for one day. Uh, I was over there for a wedding in Orange. And then uh, we had a bit of work on the Monday, but we're back in Perth. Harry, you've decided to join us. How, how was Japan? Did you enjoy it? Mate, it was awesome. Tokyo for a few nights. We um, survived the earthquake, of course. <laughs> uh, the, I tell you what, this was like, I think it was New Year's Day. And the guys I was traveling with, um, one bloke and his missus were staying, I think, a few floors above us at the hotel and messaged the group chat immediately and go, oh my God, did you just feel that? They reckon the whole building was swaying. Um, I reckon I was so hungover that my head was swaying in time with the earthquake. So I didn't actually feel any of it at all. And the other thing is, hey, Josh, just thanks very much for checking in on me about the earthquake. No one else did back home. So, um, oh, really? That was, uh, yeah, that was really nice of you. Also, we were at Haneda Airport a couple of hours before that collision with the Japan Airlines A350 in the Coast Guard Dash 8. So we um, we did pretty well to make it back. But, yeah, got up to Niseko for a bit of powder, a bit of a, a few sessions at Wild Bill's Bar. Um, the powder, oh, I'll tell you what, the powder up there. Some Stop of the best saying powder. Yeah, what you about, said powder oh, way too much. What about the snow? No, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a powder hound. I'm a bloody powder hound. Seriously, guys, come on, come sure. on. Um, uh, some of the best I had in the region since 2011, but then coming home, um, pretty much this flight from – uh, we went through Mala, Kuala Lumpur and KL to Perth. The, the entire plane, I reckon, had COVID. Oh, air COVID? Yeah, air COVID. It's like one of those um, medevac flights on a C-130 with injured soldiers. Can you stop dropping, like, plane names? Giorgio, how's your uh, New Year's? How's everything in between? <laughs> yeah, really good. Uh, got away for a little bit down south. Um, as you mentioned, went to Sydney. Uh, and, yeah, we, we went to Sydney Kings training while we were in Sydney. Yeah. Um, that was hot in there yeah i think um, really hot i think when you go to nbl stadiums you know they vary so much where people train and uh, uh i think one misnomer or one thing that people don't understand well i used to think that when cities get bigger the bigger they get you would just build the the right amount of basketball courts as the the stadium gets bigger the city gets bigger yeah but sydney has this huge lack of Oh, and demand for basketball courts. They're never available. So the Sydney Kings, they have a really nice facility, but then they also train part of the time out west in like a, a stadium from the 40s or the 50s or something, and there's no air con. And they were playing, they were training for so long, and it was 40 degrees inside. We should start some, um, some rallies. What do we want? Air-conditioned basketball courts. I think any courts at this stage when would do be we great. Want them? Sydney was cool, though. Um, I had a couple of things. Cabs. You know, uh, taxis... Harry, you've caught a taxi before and also an Uber. Yeah, I'm an experienced guy. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is relevant, isn't it? Uh, well, I've, I'm just like, every time I run out of a uh, battery on my phone and I need to get home or something like that, or you're away and you, you don't have access to a phone or anything like that, you say, you know what, I'm going to give back. I'm going to help out these guys. You know, they've bought these plates for so much money at the peak of uh, cab prices, and then they're stuck with the debt for what they bought it. You know, buy, beware, but also there's a bit of empathy in there. And I'm there thinking I'm doing my good deed for the day and walking up to the cabin going, hey, you got yourself a, dr- a ride. <laughs> You're welcome. And he cuts me off by saying 50 bucks. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, 50 bucks cash. 
no meter. I'm like, just put the meter. It's it's ten bucks, fifty bucks cash, no meter. Fuck off. I'm like, oh my god, all my empathy has just disappeared. Yeah, they don't do themselves any favors. I had a similar situation. I think like last time we were in Melbourne, Uber was surging. It was going to be like eighty five bucks um, to get into the city. I was like, fuck that. So I spoke to a taxi driver. And he's like, one hundred. And I was like, bro, wh- where's your market here? The surging Uber's eighty five. What makes you think I'm going to pay you hundred dollars? No, no, he was just going one hundred. He's going to give you a lift. <laughs> oh, Guys, I've um, actually just been um, up in Japan, Arigato. Oh, fuck off. And um, I ordered an Uber to get to um, this a train station so we didn't miss our flight. And um, they a taxi can't. They're operating as Ubers over there. It truly is the land of the future. Wow. No, they're, they're here as well. I've caught a taxi over here before. No, what? Yeah, but he's yeah. operating illegally. Yeah, I don't... You, didn't actually have to go to Japan for that one. Yeah, Could right. Have done it here. Oh, okay. well, this, Ari- is <laughs> this is just bricks, so we need to talk a little bit about basketball. We got some weird things from the league. Basketball, because we're just white guys talking about basketball. Can't dunk belly lay up a basketball. The only fantasy is in my head. So we're just white guys talking about basketball for another week, of course. Um, the two guys we spoke to, Jonah Bolden and Alex Condon. Um, no, not Alex Connor, so Alex Tui, rather. Um, so the two guys we spoke to, Alex Tui and Jonah Bolden, we'll hear about Jonah later on. But Alex Tui, lovely guy. Um, very competitive for a 19-year-old boy. Like, man. Yeah, seems so mature. I actually couldn't really hear anything that w- you were talking to him in the interview about because the fans from that uh, 1960s build basketball centre was so loud. But uh, from the brief interaction we had with him before, he, I mean... It, Leagues ahead of me in maturity at the age of 19. I, w- I won't say too much, but we we had a... In- <laughs> he was a very well-spoken, lovely dude. But we had a moment where we were talking about him in the interview and then he left. And he was being really funny after the interview. And then um, we sort of realised... Bryce Conn dropped 41 points on him and he's made a note of it. And I think the next time they play, which is somewhere in January... It's going to be an interesting one. So he's just trying to learn from it against the best player in the league. Who, who Bryce Conley, he can't be stopped right now. He keeps dropping 30-plus point games. Ever since he was on with us, I'd like to point out as well. He's Bryce Cotton's never dropped 30 points on me, just saying. Yeah, drop, yeah good point. Um, Harry, a good thing as well is I, I said, oh, Georgia, I've got to go do these interviews out west. Do you want to come? He's like, yeah, sure. Um, and then he's just sitting in this gym. <laughs> it's quite funny. We have to drive so far west, and he's just sitting in this gym by himself. I'm just like sweating. I'm sweating like, profusely. It's like a, um, it was a tr- bit of a trip back in time uh, for anyone familiar with Perth. It was like uh, the Perry Lakes basketball center <laughs> before it was renovated, but worse. Did you bring your Game Boy, Georgia? A nah. Game Boy would have helped tapes just because uh, they should be handing them out for guys like him as they rock up. Um, NBA-wise, Dort Breath continues to play well. He's averaging 9.5 and 4 rebounds a game, the former, the former uh, Perth local. And his la- he's dropped... Double-digit games 14 times since being called up from the G League. Now, he's effectively now our second-best NBA player. Uh, and this is coming from a guy who took to he was 27 to be a rookie in the NBA. So it's an absolutely crazy story. We've spoken at length before about how crazy his story is, from where he came, from the route he's taken through LSU and Europe to get to where he is and, and the NBL. Um, it's going to be really exciting to see how he goes at the Olympics next year. And I, de- I definitely YouTube. Someone luckily clips up all his highlights Every single game, um, he had 17 points against the Suns. Played really well. I've heard him being called um, the Great Barrier Reef. Nice in uh, in fantasy talk, but yeah, he's he's um he's DeAndre Ayton's backup in the center position. But Ayton's been injured quite a bit recently, and I think the Blazers would be pretty bloody happy with uh, Reef standing in for him. He's shooting, doing shooting he's so doing. well too, so he could always play the four as well. Um, and uh, what else do you have for us, Georgia? Well, yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of debates in NBA. You know, who's the greatest of all time? What's the greatest oh, goat, dynasty? Oh, goat, yeah, goat, yeah. Well, there's a new one that's taking the league by storm. Okay. If Bronny and LeBron, so Bronny is LeBron's um son. LeBron's long said, uh, just a backstory. Le- LeBron's long said that he wants his final year in the NBA to be played with his son, Bronny, yeah. and he'll yeah. go where Bronny goes, basically. Sure. So now there's this um shit fight for uh, teams to sign Bronny, who's not. Is there a shit fight? I mean, it's like, do you want LeBron in his 40th year? 
Yeah, maybe, but probably. Like, I don't think I don't think you want him that. You don't want to sell the farm for him. Yeah, you want to sell uh, 150 billion jerseys with LeBron's name on it with your. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, anyway, so the the debate goes: if Bronny and LeBron end up playing in the NBA on the same team, will they shower together? As we know, players in basketball. Hit the- <laughs> As we know, players in basketball hit the showers after games, and obviously you go to shower naked with people that you have no relation. It's kind of whatever, but what about family members, in excluding spouses, of course? I, for sure, would not want to see my father's cock when showering. It would be kind of awkward. So I'm just trying to imagine how will Bronny and LeBron handle this? Will they just squint their eyes, uh, or they will just embrace their cocks as if there was nothing weird about this? I just couldn't imagine what I would do in this difficult situation. Boys, what's your take? Uh, I think you're more accustomed to see your dad naked more than you would be a new person. I, I don't know about you guys. Like, Not as a 20 year No. 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 no I, do, I reckon it'd be fine. You just flash back. <laughs> okay. No, <it's> <laughs> no, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's the, what's the average age when you're a, when you're you're a boy that, um, that you stop, that you stop, you know, seeing your dad? I think we're going dad, into weird territory here already because now we're, we're saying. Yeah, I'll let you know when I reach it, Huz. <laughs> yeah. Has <laughs> he's dead? <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, I was just being cut off there uh, quite rudely, actually. But what's the average age that you? Oh, or, or have we moved on from this? No, I said I'll let you know when I reach it. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. <laughs> sorry. I had one more thing. Uh, ben Simmons, you know, he's he's had a tough year. He had, had his miraculous comeback where he announced that yeah, this is going to be his year. A lot of people were touting that he was going to be back to his. I guess Philadelphia form with the Brooklyn Nets, maybe a game, a franchise changing uh, player. Then he's had a bit of injuries. Maybe his his body isn't really up for the the wrong uh, the long season of an NBA season. There, there were some uh, preseason highlights of him uh, putting down shots. Let me tell you, that's yeah, never been yeah. done before. He's big on it. He's big on the highlight reels. But uh, I didn't think it was time to release a documentary. I didn't think it was time to do a mid season Instagram documentary about how much he loves basketball, how hard he's working uh, while the team's in Paris playing a game. And, you know, he's going to potentially go to Paris next year with the Olympics. But he released this video on Instagram. We've got a snippet here. And uh, it just seems like the most tone-deaf thing ever. There's a part of it, how much basketball still drives him, how much he loves it. This is a guy that sat out for a year from basketball because he was fighting a contract uh, disagreement with Daryl Morey. And (laughs) he comes out with this video. It's the biggest load of shit I've ever seen. Let's hear it. All right. I've already played it. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Uh, yeah, it is pretty funny. I, I can play, actually, I'll play it now for you if you want. Just yeah, so you... Feel good, working every day, so. Be back soon. There was a point, like, when I got hurt this season, I was like, holy shit, I don't know if I can do this again. There's just something in you, like, for me, I'm just not going to stop. I just don't have that in me to stop. It's just what I want to do. I want to continue to play basketball. Playing Bro- this game <laughs> keeps me going. Things happen at untimely times, and... For me, it's like a part of the journey. You gotta embrace like every day, every moment, and every workout, and that's what you know creates the story. This is just another part of my journey, and another test for me that I have to get through. Man, can I get you here? It's hard to explain to somebody when they've never dealt with a certain injury like this, or they've never. You can't really. It's not a visible thing. I cut this. The you guys, editing. Sorry, sorry team. I don't want to be back for one game and out. You know, I want to be back and help this team win and get to the playoffs and see where we can go. Kind of understanding, like, people want to know what I'm doing. They're interested and they're fascinated. They're pissed off. You know, some things, you know, I think I will open up and play a lot of people see. I think it's important just to have I want to say the whole thing quickly. Sorry, Harry, if you can hear job. it or not. And then you, you allow your No, I can't hear it. Add to your happiness. You know, it's all right. For me, playing basketball would add to my happiness. Like, I hate going to games and watching my team play without me. It's one of those times where I got to appreciate everything I have and everything that's in front of me. I love how he's like, uh, uh, that ain't me, uh, I don't stop. So, like, bro, you literally did. Not many players in the NBA have just stopped. You're one of them. I don't have it in me to stop. Um, mm, what about that time you stopped <laughs> for a very long time? And, and the other time you stopped for a very long <laughs> yeah. time. And the other time you didn't play for the Boomers. You stopped. Um, He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> Mark my words. It's a very nice Everyone's going to love him. Very good photo shoots as well. Uh, there was a lot of costumes and um, uh, changes right there. Very good. Um, I do hope he does play in the Olympics. It'll be very entertaining. And whether he's uh, playing or not, it'll be fantastic to see. Alex Condon also playing well with Florida in the NCAA. And Tyrese Proctor as well. It's interesting. Proctor is the highly touted guy with Kentucky. 
um, oh, sorry, with Duke rather. Uh, but Condon with Florida from WA, he's just ticking along nicely in that sixth man role. And he's one to watch. I reckon next year, him if he doesn't go pro this year and he stays at Florida, he could be really sort of a starring role for Florida. Uh, guys, should we get for the main body of the this pod? Guys, should we get to the interview? Okay. Tepu <laughs> Amaku. Roll the tape. Uh, Jonah Bolden. So he's currently the sixth man with the Sydney Kings, but for a big stretch, he stepped away from basketball altogether just before the NBA bubble. Now, if you're not a, an NBA fan, if you are an NBA fan, you probably previously would have seen him with the Philadelphia 76ers playing alongside Ben Simmons. He played about 44 games in his most successful season before eventually ending up with the Phoenix Suns. He stepped away from basketball completely. And during that period, he really delved into another world, which is cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Now he's come back to basketball and he's playing some really good hoops with the Sydney Kings in that, in that role. But it was good to speak to him and understand where his head was at at the time, where it's at now. And he isn't this normal crypto trader. He believes in the technology a lot. Like he's, he's, he has a really uh, thought deeply about the whole process. He's a lifer with crypto. And he also seems like he's come back to basketball and enjoying it more than ever. So he really believes in um, online images of monkeys wearing hats. No, he said he's walked, he's he's moved away from that it completely. But like, I think he got into it during <laughs> convenient. He got into it during the period uh, during COVID, just because he was trying to find something. But he's really open about it. He speaks about it uh, really well. So uh, here he is, Jonah Bolden. Uh, Jonah, thanks so much for, <laughs> for yep. joining us. Uh, Jonah Bolden from the Sydney Kings. Um, very special guest here today, mate. Uh, intense training going on the court. You. Yeah. An extra 40 minutes that is kept putting 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's it is what it is. I think you know we we need it. It's good for us. It's how we get our you know cardio. Uh, so it was actually really good. You know we just scrimmaged pretty much the whole time. Uh, a little bit of shooting, uh, but overall you know nothing to complain about. I think it's, it's good once we you know kind of get up and back, up and down. So. We're just over halfway point of your return to basketball. How's your body feeling? How have you found playing basketball again? Body is really good. Um, you know, being back feels great, it's fun, you know, it's nothing like the feeling. Uh, you know, being in that team, you know, collaborative kind of mindset, you know, we're going through some adversity as a team right now, a little bit of ups and downs. Um, but, you know, that's all part of it. I think like, that's one thing that I kind of forgot about was that, you know, there's the good sides and there's the bad sides, obviously. But, you know, it, it all comes with being on a team and us, you know, we're, we're a strong group. Um, you know, we had a little meeting this morning, so it's, it's been really good. Uh you had a really strong start to the year as a team, and now you are going through a little bit of a slump. You're still in fourth, ten yep. and ten, so connected to the top four. Yeah. Uh, what's been the change over the last couple of days? Um, I wouldn't say there's like a particular change, right? I think maybe you know it's we're we're kind of hitting that stagnant point of the season. Um, where we've just kind of mellowed out, you know. Like you guess, like you said, we we came out pretty pretty ready beginning of the season. The guys pumped up, and then it hits you know midway through, and you know you kind of get that stagnation. Um, but I think it's just time for, like, like I said, for us to kind of kick it into overdrive and, and understand what's at stake, uh, where we are at in the season, you know, going into the last third, um, and, and, and really starting to take it, take it serious. Because you know, every every team's a competitor, every team's a contender, really. You know, from from one to ten. So, what have you made of your role? It's it's changed a little bit over the season, but you seem to have settled into a role, probably the one of the most consistent roles. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, my role has been good. Um, you know, the coach has kind of worked with me on it. Uh, but really just being, being consistent, you know, that's my, been my focus is, you know, coming back and obviously, you know, it's going to be a transition and, and getting back into the sync of things and really kind of, you know, us as a team getting in sync with each other, everyone kind of finding their roles individually. But, but yeah, you know, I had no qualms about it and, and really just going out there and, and like I said, being consistent game to game. How hard, how hard was it to come back into a full season? Obviously, it's not the NBA where there is as many games, but... Was it hard on your body? Was it hard mentally? Like, how, how has been the transition? Yeah, it's uh, it's tough both, you know, mentally and physically. Um, you know, the mental side, just getting back to that regimen of every day. It's, you know, we're on early morning, kind of just, you know, going throughout the day. At the end of the day, it's, you know, I've got to a point where it's like it's basketball. So, you know, there's there's little to, to nothing to complain about when you're just kind of hooping, hooping as a job. Um, it's been, like I, like I said, the, the physical side of it is really just kind of legs getting back under, up under me, um, that foundational strength. Um, conditioning kind of came pretty quick, um, and then the rest would kind of fall into place. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it, it was a bit of both, but you know, we're, I'm at a pretty good stage now where I, where I thought I would be. So. And when you did come back, you were training a bit with UCLA, is that right, uh, in the period? Or, uh, uh, what? I was training at UCLA. Oh, at UCLA. Um, yeah, uh, between UCLA and, and Irvine, uh, pre, pre before I got here. Um, and then yeah, once I got here, pre-training camp, just kind of stuck through it and we got into it. 
you had a huge game against Perth, uh, 28 points. Was that, uh, it kind of showed your potential, I guess, when you're at full flight. Do you still see that as a, a role in the future in a, in a team where you can be this, the top scorer in a team? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, we're a deep team. So, um, you, know, there's at, you know, at some point there's really not enough balls even to go around because we're so talented. You know what I mean? There's only one ball on the court. So it's, it's, I think that's also been our, our downfall as well. We're so talented and, and, and everyone kind of wants to play a, a, a solid role or a big, bigger, bigger role. Um, and so really just being able to sacrifice and guys taking step, steps back, you know, knowing that they're maybe not going to get 20, 25 every game. Um, that's something that I've kind of accepted at this point now. Um, and, and that's something that I think will help us going forward, even as a team. Um, but yeah, you know, to, to, your, to your questions, it's definitely something I can see myself playing here, wherever, anywhere that's, you know, given the opportunity, right? Like, you know, nothing to complain about here. We're a very deep team. It just means everyone's roles have to kind of take a step back, you know, um, all around, so. There's a lot of players in this league this year that are getting a lot of uh, NBA NBA looks. A lot of them centers, young guys. Um, you go against them, and is the urge still there to say, "Hey, I, I could play in the NBA"? Still, is that something in your mind, or is it just playing basketball? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's 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 always there. If if a guy's up on me, that's you know um, maybe ranked or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you know, I kind of look at anyone that's in front of me the same. Um, it adds to it, sure, if they've got hype or if they're you know maybe feeling themselves or whatever. Uh, but I don't really get too too caught up into it. You know, a lot of it over here, especially, is, is a lot of hype and a lot of talk. So it's, yeah. it is what it is. But yeah, you just go out there and play. Is it a goal for you to get back to the NBA, or is it just at the yeah, highest for, level possible? For sure. Um, you know, coming back playing, um, my mindset was if I'm going to come back play pro, like I want to, like I had the mindset before, go and be the best, do the best I can do. You know, reach the best of my abilities. Um, the goal right now is just to be the best I can be. Um, and so you know, getting to that eighty percent going into like you know getting myself back to 100 percent you know wherever it takes me it takes me um but i think like i said going back to day by day game by game and just consistency would be the, the biggest thing what was the last basketball you played prior to this was it the perth um canada australia game or was there um, games after that no i played phoenix to end uh when they called the season off the nba season off right. that was my last team um that was 2019 yeah 2019 when they call the season off? NBA uh, season off, yeah. yeah. I didn't go to the bubble, so it was just before that. And where was your head at then versus now, like with basketball and everything around it? Um, I mean, it's much more fun now to, to, to a degree where um, I'm actually playing. Um, that was the biggest thing. I wasn't really necessarily playing um, and it was a bit inconsistent. Um, and yeah, I just didn't feel I could give as much to the game then as I can now. Um, so, you know, it's more enticing, it's more motivating and, um, you know, it adds more fuel when you know that you're going to be practicing to translate it to a game, to then, you know, play with and, and you know, again, be part of the team, um, contributing however that is. Um, so, you know, no comparisons, but, you know, I'm definitely having fun now being back involved with the team, having a role, whatever that is, um, and playing, you know, just on the court. At the time, was it, how hard was the decision to step away? Was it just clear in your head at the time or was it? Uh, it wasn't clear. Um, it was something that kind of just took, you know, months to be honest. Uh, I never even, I never even got to a point where I said I'm done. Um, it was more so just a thing of, you know, I didn't have that dry. I didn't, I didn't have that. Like, I, I guess where I was at situationally, like I said, I wasn't able to give as much as I would have, and I wasn't getting back, you know, reciprocally, like what I would have loved to get back from the game at that point. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't anything specific and, and I didn't make a concrete decision, I'm done. Uh, I knew I eventually, like I said, I'd, I'd come back to it and, and you know, my decision to come back was around the fact that I had missed the game. Uh, you know, I, I knew I had never really gone away from it and I was just getting an itch to come back to a team environment. Um, yeah. you know, I'd grown up forever since I was pretty much born playing and being around teams and uh, being in that environment was the first time kind of being out solo and, and obviously with family and traveling, it's, you know, it's different, um, but you're not in a team can, collaborative environment you're not you know working day to day towards a, a bigger goal with it you know others um, and so that was like one thing that I really uh, took for granted playing and now coming back to it seeing that you know this is again prime situation where we're kind of hit with some adversity um, and it really just comes down to guys playing together with each other for each other um, and understanding what that team uh, you know even word means really you know so do you think that in Australia there's more of that in the NBA like you can get lost at the end of a roster is that 
Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, that's that's the best in any sport. I think yeah. anywhere, anywhere in the world, any any league or whatever it is, the best of the best is always going to be mercenary. You know, it's always going to be if you're not, in, you know, if you're not, you always got to be providing something, or it's you know, next guy's ready. It's, it's the best, the best. You know, um, over here, sure, it's different in that you know the the skill, the athleticism. You know, it might not be up there, but you know, the IQ is still there in the NBA. You know, the physicality is up there, if not even more physical, because guys are relying more on the physicality. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's not as fast, but it's more play run. Yeah. Um, you got to stay switched on all 24 seconds because, you know, you, there's, there's actually help. In the NBA, there's no help. You can just stay on your guy, you know. Um, so it's different games, different systems, um, pros and cons of each. Uh, but obviously, when you, you know, you're playing with the best, you know, being the last, you can get lost. Um, and then, you know, obviously, even the last guy still needs to be prepared to be called upon. And so, yeah. you know, you're showtime once you get called upon. So it's... You know different levels, but yeah, you know you take it for what it is, and it's it, it is the best best. You know I'm never taking it for granted, and I and I, I love the experience there, and you know it's, it's the NBA for a reason. Uh, during that period, you, um, one of your major interests was NFTs in the crypto space. Uh, I don't think anyone ever asked you like why that was so enticing for you. Uh, well, I've always been in tech. Um, crypto had been in NFTs. I was a newfound thing, um, even with the technology itself uh, only being released then, but. Um, tech I've always been in, like I'm still in crypto, um, that's something that I check daily, it's more so from not a, it's never been a financial thing, the financials were, you know, a surplus and a bonus, but more so just from what the distributed ledger technology is doing, already doing, um, behind the scenes and going to do. Um, but that was the, the main reason, the main catalyst for me was just the in, in, in internal, intrinsic kind of motivation as to understanding where we're at technologically. Um, because it, you know, it kind of seeds off into so many different facets of technology, other than just you know a coin on a on a ledger or a coin on a chain. Um, there's so many facets of it that um, have to do with distributed ledger tech. That's more than just a Bitcoin or whatever. Um, and so that was my biggest reason as to wanting to get into it firsthand. Now that I had some time, yeah. um, and and really diving into speaking with other founders and whatnot, um, and 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 understanding where this where this tech is taking us, how they're getting involved in the real world. Um, and, and what, what, it, what it is, you know. It fluctuates so much. I, I personally um, have a very bad portfolio. Yeah. But um, when, you, when you came back to basketball, because was that a part of the downward f fluctuation where you're like, okay, what else do I love? And you remembered basketball, anything like that? Um, not even, really. Um, I, I, it was more so like I started hanging, my little one, she started playing hoops. She was in volleyball and soccer before. Yeah. Um, and I was still kind of going, um, I moved out to Vegas, so I was kind of going maybe once or twice a week just to shoot and mess around. Yeah. Uh, but it was, wasn't really until earlier this year when she started going and I started going to the courts and then we went to UCLA and I started running with the guys that I was like, you know, uh, if I'm going to be doing it more consistently like this and getting myself back in shape, I'm, I'm still kind of competing with the guys there. I was yeah. like, you know, I may as well like, you know, see what, what, what's the deal. And I'm, I was getting the itch as well. It wasn't just a random thing. It was like, okay, I want to kind of get back into this on a, the level I was before. Um, and I didn't want to put, like I said, I, I still am crypto. NFTs, have, you know, I'm not in NFTs anymore, but um, crypto, I'm still still there. Um, even with, you know, some of, the, some of the guys here on the team. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, now it's a unison. It's my first time really now um, because, you know, prior to when I had got into it in the league and stuff, I wasn't deep into it as much. Yeah. Now it's my first time, you know, Finishing practice, you know, finishing recovery, doing all that stuff, eating, and then jumping on the computer and going into that. So it's a, it's a, it's a new experience for me, and it's fun. Um, obviously, mine's here, priorities here, but it's it's you know not something that I've totally you know put to the back shelf. I think it's like I said, it's we're only on the precipice of it, um, and and you know I'm I'm blessed to be able to you know play the game I love, and then also you know play the other game that I love. If you want to call it. Uh, one last question on that before we look to the rest of the season. Uh, do you and Delhi get in some heated conversations about crypto ever, or? No, not really, uh, actually. Because I know he's very big on it as well. Yeah, he is. Um, we, we haven't, actually. Uh, I think very brief. Uh, but not too many not too many people in the NBA. Like, actually, speaking to some of the guys, they've been saying there's other guys as well. Um, but I haven't. And I think also that comes with, like, you know, there's a stigma to it as well. So guys mm. are kind of hesitant. Yeah, of course. To, to say. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's when you know the tech and understand what it is and you're coming from that backing, like, there's no shying away from it. Like, I would never shy away from a conversation about it because I and love it and I know where it's going outside of, like I said, outside of the financial aspects of it and the volatility and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer of the tech just as everyone now is a believer of the internet. Yeah. Right? You go back to 2000s and everyone's asking questions as to what is it, what's it going to be, where are we going to be? And you know, 20 years, 24 years later, um, we're here. So, um, yeah.
Oh, that's great. Uh, this season, do you still think there's a chance where the three-peat can happen? You came into a winning program. There's obviously a lot of change, a lot of talent. What needs to happen for uh, the three-peat to occur? Yeah, I still believe in it um, just as much as I did in the beginning. Like I said, there's, there's adversity and it, it, it happens. Um, I think one thing that, like, what needs to change really is just our buying efforts individually. Um, you know, for myself, from everyone literally down, down, down the um, you know lineup and, and all the way through the bench. Um, just taking onus and responsibility uh, outside of schematics, outside of you know anything else that is inside the lines. Um, and when you're on the court, kind of buying into it. Um, and I think once that happens, it becomes contagious. You know, you see guys like even you know the the, the contagiousness of it happens sometimes. Maybe a guy, one of our teammates, will hit two in a row. And guys start to really feel that. I think like where that will help us translate to a, a three peak team is where that happens on the defense. You know, we yeah. have two defensive stops in a row, three defensive stops in a row, um, and that's where we kind of you know let that translate to offense. And then you know, um, but I think that's the biggest thing. You know, like our consistency, um, our belief as a team, individuals, and as a teammate, as teammates, um, and then you know all, all fours. Like our biggest thing is you know maybe first two quarters we're coming out energized and we're ready to go. Uh, and then as soon as you know, halftime hits or third quarter hits, we kind of start to slowly uh, dissipate. So I think the biggest thing as well is just consistency over four, all four, you know, 10 minutes. Even if we need to approach it as uh, every 10 minutes is the first quarter, you know, that might be yeah. a thing. Um, but I think, yeah, that's, that's it's definitely there. I'm, we all have the same belief, um, you know, through it. You know, it can kind of test your belief for sure. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just maintaining it and us getting back to playing our game. And, you know, obviously it doesn't help with being so deep. you got to rotate different guys and and you know there's mm. that but like i said once we kind of all buy in um we'll be fine one last one because i know we're sitting in this gym which is like 40 degrees right now um olympics next year would you put your hand up if uh given the opportunity yeah um i've had some thought about it uh spoken to a few few people um it's something that i'm i haven't necessarily put focus completely on yet just because i'm here um and and don't want to take away from my mind being here um, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely there. Um, I just haven't committed or said anything. You know, Do you, I just had a last one. You see Dante Exum, he goes away from basketball, well, yeah. goes away from the NBA and yeah. has really improved. Does, does that give you any, uh, I guess, confidence? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's, 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 an, it's a testament to him. Um, you know, again, another example of adversity um, and, and, and really just sticking to it, you know, knowing his game, going away off to the boonies, out to Serbia, um, played, you know, I played out there for a little bit against the rivalry of the Partizan, but um, yeah, it's, it's a testament to his, his drive and his, you know, tenacity to get back to where he believes he, he, he should be. Um, and I believe, you know, he should be there, he's proving that. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's definitely motivation for myself. Um, I think it's, it should be motivation for anyone seeing a story like that. You know, it's not easy to get back into, a, into the league. Um, but when you show, you know, who you are as a player and improve upon that, um, you know, it's, it's, the world is at, is at your cup, so. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Jonah, it's been great to see you back playing basketball and yeah. excited for the next couple of years. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much, mate. Thank you. Cheers, buddy.